In China, the government has also stepped into the country's automobile industry. Facing pollution and overpopulation in their major cities, the electric car appeared as an obvious solution. Around 2010, the Chinese announced in their five-year plan that by 2020, they would have five million cars on their streets. And nobody took it seriously. At the time, the Chinese were producing a few thousand electric cars. And then in the last three years, it's gone up 50, 60, 80 percent each year. They've become the world's number one market for electric vehicles. And I think that they'll reach their five million cars by 2020. In major cities such as Beijing, several policies have been applied to encourage inhabitants to buy an electric car. Owners of gasoline cars are not allowed to use them every day. And to buy one, they must take part in a lottery. A person in Beijing has a one in 200 chance of winning, and the lottery is held only every other month. Di Lu lives in this northeast Beijing neighborhood. After trying unsuccessfully for six years to buy a car, she's decided to buy an electric one. The only way to get around the lottery. But even that solution won't help with the traffic jams. I live beyond the fifth ring road, near the sixth ring road. The company where I work is near the third ring road. And so every day, I cross the fifth, fourth, and third ring roads to get to work. You see the parts marked in red? There are lots of traffic jams. There are not enough parking spaces in the neighborhood. So we have this kind of parking. For the purchase of the electric car, Dilu benefited from a subvention from the government, covering a quarter of the car's price. It's a BYD, a Chinese brand, the everyman's car maker in China. Dilu knows that at rush hour, it will take her an hour to cover the 16 kilometers to her office. There's too much pressure on the traffic in Beijing. As consumer power has risen in China, more and more people can buy cars now. It's not like before. Dilu is emblematic of this middle class that's exploded across China, especially in the big cities, a middle class that has been strongly encouraged to use the electric car. Following Beijing's high pollution over the past few years, all the most recent cars have been equipped to fight against fine particle pollution. Here is the PM2.5. Its purpose is to detect and filter out pollution. The system can control the rate of pollution inside and outside the car. This filter system means that I no longer need to wear a mask in the car. The spikes in pollution, especially frequent over these past two years, have left Beijing's population aware of the ecology. Most people are motivated to reduce waste and pollution. Nothing can replace the air that we breathe. Each person must make an effort to improve the air quality. BYD is riding on this ecological wave. It's the symbol of this young Chinese electric car industry that wants to challenge the historical builders. A battery maker that acquired a nearly bankrupt car company in 2002, it is now the third largest electric car maker in the world behind Tesla and Renault-Nissan. Located on the outskirts of Shenzhen in the south of China, BYD's factory employs 30,000 people. And as in every car factory across the world, 
It all begins with robots that prepare the vehicle's frames. Several assembly lines are in motion at once, assembling cars with all types of motorizations. On this line for preparing motors, there are electric motors, recognizable by their orange high-tension wiring, gas engines with their oil levels, and hybrid motors combining the two motorizations. These technicians are able to assemble three different types of motors in the same day. They're ready to adapt to all the market changes. If the Chinese government were to completely ban gas and diesel motors, then China would be ready to produce only electric cars. They become the planet's number one market for electric vehicles, and that's a very powerful movement whose consequences we can't yet see. Because if they manage to bring down the costs, if they manage to be the first to export in mass quantities, then it's going to have an impact everywhere. The automobile world is shaking. The specter of the Chinese electric car floats over the entire planet. Perhaps tomorrow we too will be driving a BYD. It feels better to keep working for the good of all mankind. BYD can afford getting Leonardo DiCaprio to mark their place as the world's third biggest car maker. You can make history tomorrow. Behind the claim of battling pollution, the electric car has also taken an important economic stake in the worldwide automobile market. China has already won a dominant position on the battery market, that 300 kilo plaque necessary to power the vehicle of the future. 10 years ago, this piece was unknown on assembly lines. Now it's at the crux of the battle. China's fabrication capacity triples every two years while it is barely existent in Europe and the U.S. The American consulting firm Alex Partners, a specialist in the automobile industry and famous for its turnaround of General Motors in 2009, is keeping close tabs on this market. Laurent Petitzon is their managing director. If tomorrow a wave of the magic wand took us to 100% electric cars, then about 30% of the vehicle's value would shift suddenly to China, since that's where most of the batteries are now designed and produced. The challenge for Europe and the U.S. is to produce batteries and electric motors so as to keep a hand on the value chain in the future, for the vehicle of the future. Not only is the global automobile industry going through a major transformation, it also has to prove itself in the field of autonomy, this unprecedented technological revolution for cars. <laughs>